to him we give the praise and the honor and the glory yes. tonight yes. in yes. the name yes. of Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Again, I share with you that it's an honor to, to, to be with you, Pastor, in, in, the, in the body of Christ here in, in the name of Jesus. And, and I know that uh, we're, we're going to move ahead quickly here because of time, but I don't want time to control me. But I realize that it is Wednesday night, but I do have a word on my spirit tonight. That I want, I want to leave with you tonight. Amen. That we, 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 we need to let, we need to begin to digest within our lives. So I want you to open your Bibles tonight to Deuteronomy chapter 1 with me. Deuteronomy chapter 1 with me and, and at the beginning of chapter 2. You say, preacher, you're going to go through all those verses? No, probably not. But I want us to, to be there tonight as the foundation tonight in, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy, cha Deut Deuteronomy chapter 1. If you understand anything about the, the 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 law of Moses, you're going to understand the book of Deuteronomy is actually the second law. That's that, that's that's what it's entitled: the second law. It's the second second giving of the law as Moses was preparing the children of Israel to cross over into the promised land. But but the reason it's the second giving, if you understand that the first generation was not going to be able to go. All right, let me just say that again. Because of disobedience, the first generation that came out of Egypt was not going to be allowed to go into the promised land mm. because they didn't believe God. Yes. They didn't believe God totality of what God was going to do. They, they would do without. God, they would cry unto Moses. They would cry unto God, and, and, and God would send them manna from heaven. God took care of them in the wilderness, but yet... Every time they would turn, they would turn their back. They would turn their back upon God, and they begin to to be crybabies and begin to walk in their own own way again. So here we see that 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 that, that in, in the book of Deuteronomy we, we see that the word of the Lord is, is, is spoken in what we call the the, the, the second law. It, it's it's spoken to to a new generation. Everybody say new generation. New, new generation. generation. And, and, and I'm feeling strong tonight because I, I'm seeing God raising up a new generation oh, in the midst yeah. of us tonight, yeah. yes. right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. A new generation. I come on, let's just go say it, say it out loud. I'm a new generation. I'm a new generation. Let's, let's just believe that tonight and walk by faith tonight in the name of Jesus. That, that I'm a new generation tonight in, in the name of Jesus. Now yes. I I want to I want to tell you this, and I'm going to try to hurry tonight, but I want to I want to tell you this because it, it, it's important. Important. The generation behind you can, can only walk in what they're familiar with of the generation that is before them. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in for just a minute. And, and, and so what we've ended up with in, in our day and time is we understand, listen, I understand that, 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 that God the Father, God the Son, through God the Holy Ghost is preparing us for the rapture. I, I understand that tonight. Man, I, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to get out of here. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to get Amen. out of here. Come on. But I also understand that before that happens, that we we we've got we've got to be the remnant that God is trying to prepare for the last day mm -hmm. to help the revival of the last day come forth in, in the name of Jesus. Yes. You, you understand that? Yes. Well, I, let, let me just go ahead and throw this out. I really don't want to make nobody mad at me the first night, but if you do, we'll get over it. <laughs> but you 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 understand that we can't do what God wants us to if we got that old familiar spirit Amen. of the oh. old generation within us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. I've, I've, I've been in this 44 years, but even saying that, I understand that I'm beginning. I'm just beginning to learn after 44 years. Mm -hmm. and I'm just beginning to learn. But I, but, I, but I understand that. I understand what that familiar spirit is. Mm -hmm. I understand. They, we, we try to train men and women in the seminaries of our day of that, in that familiar spirit. This is the way we've done it. This is, all we've done, uh, this is the way we've always done it. And I'm gonna, let me go ahead and throw this in, and no extra cost tonight. But but every church has been start, every church that has started under the influence of, of the Lord Jesus Christ and the influence of the Spirit, God will give them a revelation. Mm -hmm. the, the revelation is the revealed Word of God. You take the Word of God within your life. God has shown me a revelation. I needed God to, had called me to step out and start this church. Whether, whether you're the apostle, whether you're the, the the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, or the evangelist, I believe in the fivefold ministry. How do you? How come, preacher? Because it's, it tells us in Ephesians chapter four. Most churches don't survive because they don't operate under the fivefold ministry. Amen. That's another Amen. message for Amen. another day. But but you 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 understand. And so what what happens is is is, is that we, 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 we get this revelation from God. We, we start this church, and, and thank you, God, for, for the church that he started here underneath y'all. And, and, and you take this as a word tonight because it's important. And, and, and just because you call yourself a non-denominational church, if you're not careful, you'll become a denomination. Yes. Yes. Come on, preach. Come on. And, and already people that are listening that belong to denomination are probably going to get mad at me, but no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to understand this. 
There's nothing wrong in belonging to a denomination as long as as long as you and that denomination are always open to fresh revelation from the from, from Amen. God Himself. Amen. 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 Fresh revelation. That that that's that's what we're we're to, we're to operate in. And and anybody that doesn't want to operate in fresh offer. Uh, Fresh revelation from God. You found yourself walking in a familiar spirit. This is the way our forefathers did it. Well, there's nothing wrong with what they did because they probably walked in revelation. But but God wants you to walk in a, in a special revelation mm. or in a relationship with Him. And when you're in a relationship with Him, you're going to automatically receive fresh revelation in the yes. name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. What do you mean, preacher? Every scripture has one interpretation. One interpretation. That you go, every scripture has one interpretation. But it, it, it can have many impartations. Got real quiet. <laughs> the Bible says in Romans, let me give you a, an easy one and a simple one. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have used that for years to lead people to salvation. One, one, one interpretation. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But what happens after you're saved, can I still use that verse? Another impartation? Yes, you can still use that verse. Because why? We need to be calling upon him every day of our life. Amen. Amen. You, are you are you with me now? Amen. And so we understand that we understand that that so so the, 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 and this this is why the church can't walk in unity today. This is the problem the church of our day and time has is 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 because of that familiar spirit. We, we all have it. Amen. We we're all programmed. You, you're programmed in what your mom and daddy did. Come on, you go to the doctor today, and they they're going to ask you if your mom and daddy had this. They're going to well, you're probably they're they're going to tell you you're going to have it. Yeah, that's a lie out of hell. Amen, no, amen. No, you can speak right. against it, rebuke it in the name of the in Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yes. yes, come on, amen. amen. Come on, I I don't want to offend anybody, but I want you to understand that's a familiar spirit. Yes. That's a familiar spirit, and every one of us carries around a little bit of that familiar spirit. And until we're willing to get rid of that familiar spirit, mm. we'll not proceed in the divine destiny where God wants us to be. Preacher, why are you telling us this? Because that's why. That's why. That's why the 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 Bible speaks clearly in Deuteronomy that the new generation had to have a new word coming forth from the man of God in their in their season in their day and time if they were going to go into the promised land or they were going to continue to to wander in the wilderness just like the old generation did for nearly forty days. It took 11 days to, to, to get from where they were, or it should have took 11 days to get from where they were over to the promised land, but it took them 40 years. Yes. Yes. Why? Because of that familiar spirit. Why? Because they didn't believe God. They didn't trust God. Why? Because they started following other people instead of following the presence of God. Amen. Yes. When you read the book of Joshua, more I got to hurry. When you read the book of Joshua, you understand that Joshua, being the, the the mighty warrior that he was, that he 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 understood what it was when Moses spoke to him and Moses gave him directive and said, "Go out and whip these people." What did Joshua do? Got the army, went out and whooped them. When when Mo, when 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 Joshua was 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 being prepared as a warrior, he, he he was actually second in command under Moses, but he actually did what Moses told him to do. He had no he had no first hand revelation from God. But but let me, let me I don't have time to take you over there. But when you study the life of you study the life of Joshua, what you're going to find out is, and when you get over, you look at Joshua that every time Moses went up the mountain to what they call the tent of the tabernacle, and Moses would stick his head his head in there to hear what God had to say. You remember that when he come out, there was a lot of times they had to cover his head because the Shekinah glory was so bright the people yes. couldn't even see that. Right. Yeah. Well, the Bible records that Joshua was always in the background, and he 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 stayed attentive attentive under the tent of the tabernacle. Mm. It wasn't that he didn't do what Moses said he did, but he knew he knew didn't know what it was, but he knew that there was a presence there from Jehovah God that he had to pay had to, had to pay attention to. That's why when you get over to, to when you get over and, and 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 you see Moses going up to the mountain, looking into the promised land, realizing he wasn't going to get to go, come down, laid hands upon Joshua, and he knew Joshua was going to get to go in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Joshua was a part of the new generation. You say, wait a minute, he was an older man. Oh yeah, but he was one. He was one of those five that came back and gave a good report. Amen. Amen. There was two of them that came back and gave a good report. They were going to get to go on into the promised land. But the old generation wasn't going to get to go. And here's the key. Here's why the Holy Ghost put this on my spirit tonight for us tonight is. God, God wants you to go into the place that he's called you to go in the name of Jesus. Yes. He wants you in his divine will 
under his divine guidance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But if all you're staying is, is that familiar spirit that this is the way I've always done it Amen. and you can't change me, well, I'm not here to change you anyway. I, I, it wouldn't work if I changed you. <laughs> Holy Ghost going to change you. Amen. If there's any change that needs to be done. And so you understand tonight in the name of Jesus, you got to get that familiar spirit off. we got to get it off of us tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus yes, Christ. Amen. We all got it. Don't, 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 don't look at me like that. Don't, don't, you know, I'm glad there's not eating tomatoes. Don't get right throwing that. You, you, you thought, man, I freely worship tonight. Praise God. That's a part of it. That's, that's, that's worship. But you see, until you go all the way into worship, Amen. until you go all the way into the promised land, you, you, you're, just, you're just dabbling around out there in the presence mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. That's why when you get on the book of Hebrews, book, book, of, book of Hebrews, under the Apostle Paul, I believe, but especially under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, he says, now we have boldness to come into the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happened to most people is, is because our forefathers did, didn't know what it was to go into the Holy of Holies. Yeah. And now, now we see that the Holy of Holies is the place we ought to be. But wait a minute, there's something in my mind. Well, I, but, but, my, but my past, but this and but that. Well, you need to get your butt out of the way. Hey, and you need to understand on. tonight Woo. that listen to me. It's not about your butt. You need to get on over there and where God wants you to be because every time you use an excuse, it's that familiar spirit that rises up within you and you're missing the fullness that God has for your Amen. life Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Everybody with me so far? Yes. yes. So we understand that, it, that, 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 that and that this, this spoke to me and I want to, come on, write it down, put it in your spirit. But the nation, the nation, the nation, the generation, they own the promised land because the God promised them yes. the land. Yes. Well, what does that mean, preacher? Everything that, that God has for you took place at the cross of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. Everything you need took place at the cross. Amen. Everything the nation had, God promised to Abraham, Abram at that time. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was pointed under the promised land. And matter of fact, the Bible says Abraham was looking for a city whose maker and builder was God. They were looking for, for that city, and, and it was the place they were supposed to be. But when they came out of Egypt, they had a hard time getting there because they were moaning and groaning. Who would want to go back to Egypt anyway? 400 years of bondage. 400 years of being told what to do. But yet, and here's the, here, but, but that familiar spirit would set in, but my old life looked better, so I'm not going to walk into the new life. Right. Mm. Come on now. Mm. Come on. Wow. Mm. So I want you to know that the nation, the nation, mm, the nation of Israel already owned the promised land. Yeah. It was their spiritual birthright. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. Come on. Come on. See, you don't get it. Mm. They had to, they had to get there. I yes. understand. Yes. You gotta make the journey. Yes. Line up on line, precept upon precept. Yes. You you gotta get there. Yes. And that's the problem. That familiar spirit's stopping you from getting there. But I want you to know the promised land is already yours. Yes. The fellowship, the, the, the joy of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, the provision of the Lord. Mm. The power of the Lord, the authority of the Lord, the confirmation of the Lord, the man of the from heaven, whom is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the body that my brother sung about tonight, and the blood that, that he sung about tonight. It's already ours in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. So you understand that we already have a right because of the cross, and it, that and it belongs to us in the name of Jesus. So yes. we just have to occupy what God is. Uh, and this is what God was trying to tell them. This is what God. This is what God was saying. Uh, uh, the old generation can't go. Why? Why did He say that old generation you can't go? Because He had to get this new generation to where they had to step out there, and they couldn't see that old life anymore. That's right. mm -hmm. Jesus said, "Any man putting his head to the any man putting head to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God." Yes. The new generation will not been fit for the. For the promised land if the old generation hung around. Yes, yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. So it's time we let the Holy Ghost clean the house. That's right. Amen. I'm not telling I'm not talking about cleaning the house physically, I'm talking about cleaning the house spiritually. Yes. So I want you to understand the nation the nation already owned it. It was their land. They were to possess it by the power of God. And this yes. is the problem they had. The old the old familiar spirit. This is the problem they had. All they saw was their power, the power they had. The power they had in Egypt was a beggarly way. Mm, you'll catch that about tomorrow. 
The power they had in Egypt was a beggarly way. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when you get over here into the new generation, they were going to be under the presence of God, which is what he wanted the old generation to be. Mm. But I, they were a beggarly way. They were spiritually bankrupt. Mm. Even, even when the, the man of God, the prophet, the, the anointed man of God would speak the word of God unto them, it would last for just about, about five minutes and then it was gone. Mm. Mm. And before you look at them and don't understand that, how many times have you left this building and it's lasted about three minutes and it was gone? Oh, come on. So I want you to understand that the, 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 the promised land was not only theirs already, but I want you to understand that if it was theirs already, then my God, oh my God, my God, if it's mine already, then my God has already got the provision and the power and the personality to put within me to yes. get over there where I need to be yes. in the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Well, preacher, what do I do? I got to rebuke that that familiar spirit. Yes. Yes. I got to cast it out in the name of Jesus. Yes. He said, preacher, why do you have to cast it out? Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 that we got to bring down stronghold. Yes. We, and that familiar spirit is a stronghold within your own stinking thinking right now. And you got to bring it down right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. And be a, you're either going to be... See, it's amazing how we can be a faith people when we gather here on, on, on a service night. Mm. But what about tomorrow? Come on. What about tomorrow when you look at your bank account? Come on. What about tomorrow when you're not feeling real good? What about these other things that's going on outside of it? Well, the problem is you're paying more attention. Jesus said sufficient is for today. Right. He'll, and come on, if you can come trust on. him for today yes. and yes. what needs to happen, don't yes. you think he'll be in your life tomorrow? Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, they had the power to, to possess. They had the power to possess. Yes. I want you to know, say it with me, I've got the power to possess. I have the power to possess. But they could not enjoy the land. And here's the key. They, they could not enjoy the land, the first generation, because they did not walk in the promises or they did not, not walk in the truth. Mm -hmm. You'll never, and the second generation, the, the first generation had to go so the second generation could walk in the promises. This is why he told Joshua, Joshua, keep my presence ever before you. The, 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 the presence of God had to stay out in front of Joshua. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God knew that if the, his presence became like a familiar spirit, that it would become familiar to the people and they would quit honoring his presence because it would become familiar to him. Ooh. You better get out. You better get out. Ooh, well, let me just you say it. Come, Come on. on. You better understand just, just because you think you show up here, the presence is going to be here. Mm. Ooh. Mm. You, better, you better quit thinking because they're here, the presence is going to be here. Yes. That's right. You need to bring the presence with you yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 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 That would sure be a big help to yeah. It, ta it, it, it takes half a service anymore for, for, for the minister of music or for the man of God or the woman of God to stand up before the people of God to get the presence of God flowing because you don't bring the presence with you. Amen. Why? Because that familiar spirit. You, you, lead, you, you God, God's drawn us into his presence tonight. From the first song he began to sing, he's drawn us into his presence tonight. Preacher, what do I do? I go deeper with him. And listen, let me let me just throw this out. Right now, hear me and hear me well. Now. God is calling us from deep to deeper right now. Yes. Boy, that went over good too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Truth, brother. Come on. Come on. When Ezekiel was carried and looked at the church house, got a personal view of what God was doing in the spirit. The water came out of the church house, went to their ankles. Yes. Man, I, that's another message, and I better not get started on that. But then he went to their knees. Yes, then he went to their loins. Yes. And then it went to so deep that they couldn't, they couldn't even control it. That's where God's trying to get us. Yes. Where we'll get in the Come water on. so yes. deep yes. that we trust God in the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And when we get to that place, we you're not going to be able to tag along with those familiar spirits. Mm. Those familiar spirits yes. are going to go in the name of Jesus. Yes. He said, Preacher, you don't understand my mom and daddy what they're going to say. And, and you're just going to have to let it go. Yes, yes. yes. You, you, you can't make everybody understand. Mm. Yes. That's what you can't. I come out of denomination years ago, and, they, and, and, and when the Holy Ghost began to move upon my life, I really thought, man, it was up to me to make everybody understand. And then God told me one day, no, it's not up to you. That's right. It's not up to you to make everybody understand. 
But it's up to you to walk into water. I've called you right now in, in, the, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you, I want you to understand tonight, and praise God, we're, we're running out of time quick, but I want you to understand that the, the nation owned the land by the grace of God, by that divine influence of God, the nation owned the land. The nation had, and any time God calls you, he empowers you. Amen. The nation had the power but the nation must walk in the truth in the in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Kadesh Barnea is where they are. And I'm going to give you verse 3 of chapter 2. And then I don't know how much further we're going to get. But I want you to see what the Lord told them. Because it's a foundational verse I'm going to give you for the week right here. Uh, uh, chapter 2 verse 3. Mm. Where the Lord spoke, speaks unto him. Mm. 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 He says you, you have skirted this mountain long enough. Yes. Turn yes. northward. Yes. Now let me let me just put that down to Texas theology. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. If you don't learn to get out of that familiar spirit, if you don't learn to get out of that religion and get into a relationship, yes. on, it's going to grab a hold of you so tight that you can't get out of it one day. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. Come, on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. And so in 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 verse three of chapter two. As he speaks about the desert years that they, they were experiencing, he told them to, 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 to get out of this. Quit circling this mountain over and over and over again. Now, we don't have time tonight, but you can read about this Kadesh Barnea experience that they had over about Numbers number 14. There's also a New Testament commentary about it over about in about Hebrews chapter 3 and 4 because when you finally enter into the promised land and enter into the presence where God wants you to be or when you finally leave that familiar spirit, you'll find a rest that belongs to the people of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you mean by rest? It means you're in relationship with Christ. He, you, you don't have fear anymore. You've got a peace that passes all understanding. You're not worried about what others think. Yes. You're not worried about uh, talk, what others are talking about you, saying all sorts of things about you. Why? Because you're in relationship with the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. So you understand that, 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 that the New Testament commentary is found in Hebrews chapter 3 and Hebrews chapter 4 in, in, in the name of Jesus. And, and, and God warns, and, and, and you go to Hebrews, and man, if we had time, and God warns them in Hebrews mm -hmm. about an evil heart of unbelief. If you look at anything of, 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 of the outline of Hebrews, it, it's talking about God's warning them about a heart of unbelief. That's why the first generation had to go, and that's why God was now able and trying to teach and giving a second reading of, of the word of the Lord, of the law, however you want to put it, to the, to the second generation so that they could receive it. Wait a minute. Because when, when, when the, the law was given, when the word was given of the promises of God, of the promised land to the first generation, remember, you say, wait a minute, didn't they hear the second generation? They probably heard for an instant, but remember, their eyes were upon the first generation, not upon their generation. That's why I say across this country, anywhere I go, anywhere I speak, you can't expect your children to do anything that you're not doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Woo! There you go. That's right. You can't. If, if you're going to sit around and act like the kingdom of the world, act like the kingdom of Satan, don't expect your children or your grandchildren to get over into the kingdom of God because you're acting like the kingdom of Satan or the king or the kingdom of this world. Amen. 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 Well, yes. uh, <laughs> come on. You can't look around in unbelief. What does unbelief do? Unbelief. Now, now catch, catch this with me. And man, I just want to just set a few foundations tonight. Is that okay? Um, unbelief. And, 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 and th th this is what th this is what we got to understand. Unbelief really questions the dependability of God's word. If you got any unbelief in you tonight, and, and you say, let, let me give you an example. I'm amazed how how we'll pick out certain parts of the word that we agree with and we walk in, and we and we're obedient to that certain part of that word. But when the word's trying to get us straightened out, we lay it aside. Amen. That's unbelief. That's unbelief. Amen. So you understand that unbelief, and this is why the first generation had to go, unbelief takes your dependability off of God and you try to depend upon your own self in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you a second thing what unbelief does. Unbelief wastes your time. Yes. That's right. <coughs> <laughs> it's more than that, it wastes God's time with you. But it wastes your time. Yes. Can you imagine? 
40 years in the wilderness and only took 11 days? Why? Unbelief. Yeah. It wastes your time. Can you, ima can you imagine how much better off your relationships would be now? Can you imagine how much advanced you would be in the kingdom of God now if you would have believed God in every word? Come on. Come on. In Christ Jesus, all yes. things are possible. Yes. yes. That if I would have believed that from day one, how, how much farther down the road I would be Amen. now in the name Amen. of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm thankful that I got a God of mercy and a God of grace, that a God that forgives me, and that he, he restores. I'm thankful for that in the name of Jesus. But yes. let me tell you something. Don't think that when you do something in the physical realm, yes, God forgives yes. you, but there can still be a price to pay in the physical realm. Yes. yes. Come on. Prove it. Come on. The first generation. Yes. I proved it. The first generation. Yes. yes. And so unbelief takes our dependability off of God and it focuses back on, back on, our, on ourselves what I believe and what I think. Who who gives a flip what you think? Yeah. <laughs> really? Come on. <laughs> yes. Who does? Amen. It's what what does God say? That's, that's right. right. What does God that's say? That's right. Absolutely. Yes. You know, and, and that's the key. And and we can march out of here as God's army believing what God says. Can you imagine the power that would be in Hallettsville, oh, Texas? Because yes. we are in agreement of what yes. God says. Yes. Yes. And you yes. quit picking and choosing what you want to believe yes. and let everything else go. Yes. Unbelief also, and, and this, this is a key to me right here. Because it did for the first generation. Yes. Unbelief robs you of God's blessing. Do you understand when you get over to Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, well, the whole book, you get over to the book of Ephesians, it, it, it calls us blessed. It calls us blessed. Yes. I, I, know, I know preachers that go around and call people blessed. And amen. That, that, they, majority of the times when they do that, they're speaking of what God says they want them to be and where they are right now. Amen. Woo! Because not all people are blessed. That's right. That's right. God wants you to be blessed, so I'll call you blessed tonight because that's what God wants. That's right. Mm -hmm. But you understand when you got unbelief, you, you can't receive God's blessing. That's right. it, it, oh, that they're on. not going to come. Come on. Because His Word is His favor. His Word is His grace. His Word is His truth. And it goes together with His favor. And yes. it blesses you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So you got to occupy His truth. And then the favor of God begins to flow in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Somebody yes. ought to shout to come God. Come on. Yes. 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 Come on. Come on. Well, don't look around in unbelief, please, but just look up to Jesus. Yes. Yes. Yes, God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. So this, this generation had some learning to do. Yeah. It was a book of transition. It is a book of transition. Transitioning them from first generation people to second generation people. It, 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 it gives the basic fact that you're going to find over here where it talks about that in about chapter 6 and we're talking about that God loves them. A basic fact they needed to understand that God loves them. Yeah. And see, wait a minute. If you're in a home and the love of God is never shown and the love of God is never talked about in the first generation, do you think the second generation is ever going to know the love of God? No. no. So this is what's happening right here. That's, that's why the man of God, the prophet of God, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, had to relay unto them that you got a God that loves you now. Yes. They're not looking at the first generation. They now have a realization that, hey, we're the generation that's going to go. Yes. We're the generation that's going to go yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And so now they're having to realize that, that we've, we've got a, a love of God. So that's a basic fact. Do you understand that as they begin to possess the Canaan land, they, they begin to understand that they had a new diet? Amen. They, yeah. did, they quit eating off the manna? Mm. Woo! Yeah. They begin to eat the food that God wanted them to eat in the name of Jesus. Yes. yes. So it's a, it's, it's a transitional book in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, let me, let me try to shorten this tonight just a little bit. Well, preacher, what is that, what is that going to require if I'm going to, if I've circled verse 3 and I've got it circled in my Bible? That if I've skirted this mountain long enough, if I've hung around over here with first generation people and I've tried to follow them, but they're not under the presence of God, i got to realize now that God is raising up a generation right now to be the remnant. What is it that i got to do? Well, first of all, you gotta be you, you gotta be sure you're in the truth every day of your life. Amen. You gotta feed Amen. your spirit every day of your life. Every you got day. to. You got don't you just show up here on Wednesdays and Sundays and expect that to feed your spirit. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. Come on. It'll never last. It'll never last. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. Where do you get that? Well, in, in, in chapter 1 and verse 1, it says that these are the words which Moses spoke to all of Israel. These are the words that Moses spoke to all of Israel. What is he speaking unto them? He's speaking on the word of God. He's yes. speaking on the truth. Yes. In the beginning, what's the word? The word was with God, and the word was God. Yes. Come on. John 1.1. 1, 1. Yes. He's speaking unto them the word, the, the word of truth. And just as the word hovered, uh, excuse me, the spirit hovered over the uh, over the earth in Genesis chapter 1, God spoke to the word, which was Jesus. The word spoken to the spirit, and the spirit and with the word created what God wanted created. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so you, you understand the second generation had to learn this within their life. So they had to come to a point of sitting under the word to receive the word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the words that Moses spoke unto this generation. My Lord, I pray you would understand this tonight in the name yes. of Jesus. These are the words. That, these are the words. And I come on, I, I lift Jesus up tonight. I don't care if yes. you remember who I am or not tonight, yes. but right. I want you to know God's speaking you some yes. words yes. for you, for you, a new generation tonight Amen. that's going to raise you up tonight yes. in the name of the yes. Lord yes. Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. It's going to cause you to walk into your promised land that yes. God wants you to. You say, Well, you don't know why I'm my husband or my wife or my children or my grandchildren. You quit looking at all that and look to Jesus tonight, yes. who yes. is the author and the finisher of yes. your faith tonight. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Why can't you be a generation for them that changes things That's according right. to truth? Yes. Yes. In the name yes. of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. Amen. Second thing I leave with you tonight. Down about verse number six. Chapter one. The Bible says in verse six, the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, well, you ought to underline, circle, or something because basically what, what Holy Ghost speaking to me is you got to have an ear to hear in the name of Jesus. Yes. yes. So you not only have the word spoken unto you, you've got to have an ear to hear in the name of Jesus. Mm. You know, the Bible says, oh, you, the Bible says over in Corinthians that I have not seen or ear heard the things that belong to them that love God. Mm -hmm. In other words, what is that saying? There's still more yet that God has for us. That's right. Yes. But you got to have an ear to, ear to hear and an eye to see. Yes. You, you've got you've got to the name. It can't just pass pass through. That there's something on, on on the inside of your inside of you tonight called your spirit. I'm not talking about the mind. I'm talking about your spirit. When the word's spoken unto you, don't let it just go on through and come out yes. the other side. But let it get deep into your spirit tonight yes. in the name of Amen. Jesus. Yes. Amen. You got to have ears to hear. That's why when you get over the book of Revelation, when you'll never understand the book of Revelation until you have ears to hear what the Spirit has to say unto That's the right. churches. Yes, yes. All seven of those churches he spoke that unto, but really, oh, another message another day, but really, <laughs> uh, you're going to find all seven of those churches active in, in, in the New Testament church today. Yes. And if we're going to change that familiar spirit, then we're going to have to have ears to hear Here. in the name of the Lord yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. And what was it they had to hear? Same thing I told you in verse chapter 2, verse 3. You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Mm. Mm. Well, wait a minute. If you, if, if you go back and you understand what Moses said to them in verse 1 through 5, you understand they've already been given the word. They've already been given the passageway. The word will give you the passageway you need to go if you got ears to hear the word. That's right. Yes. yes. And will be obedient to the word. Have faith in what you're hearing in the name of God. No, quit trying to wait for it to happen. Quit trying to explain it out. Quit trying to say, well, I'll do it when this gets straightened out. You, that's you're that's going right, to miss it. Right. It's too late. Yes. That's right. You don't miss it. It's, it's way too late. You're going to miss your calling. You're going to, miss, you're going to end up being over there another a, a generation that doesn't get to receive all that God has for us in this day. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. They not only had to have an ear to hear, but they had to, had to have an eye to see. In verse number eight, it says, in, in verse eight, it says, see, S-E-E. -E. I, I like big words. Y'all y'all hang with me on my big words. I like those. S-E-E. -E. They had to see. They had to see what, what, what God was doing. Come on. I, come on. I, 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 you, go to, you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, and, and the Bible says that if you continue to see things with the physical eye, it's death, it's going away, but when you see it in the spirit, it's eternal, it's yes. life, and it's stay. Amen. Amen. So what the, the second generation had to learn was that they not only had to hear what Moses was saying, but they had to begin to begin to see it within their spirit. My God, I can get there. Yes. Yes. It's my land. Yes. Yes. God, my God gave it to me. Yes. Yes. I can begin to see it in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. See, I have said before, I have said, listen to me, verse number eight. See, I have set the land before you. 
Go in and possess the land which the Lord, the Lord swore to your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them and their descendants after them. Amen. It's more than hearing, but it's seeing. Can you see it? Can you see the freedom in Christ Jesus? Yes. Can you see the promised land? Can you see that you're leaving the former generation and you're getting over here and the presence of God is real within your life? Yes. Do you have a hunger to begin to see the things of God within your life in the name of Jesus? Yes. Can you truly set your mind on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you begin to pay attention to what heaven is saying unto us tonight in the name of Jesus? Not only saying, but can you begin to see it in the spirit realm tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ? Yes. You talk about the spirit realm and most people go bananas. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. Until you learn to walk in the spirit, yes. you'll never yes. get to where God Amen. wants you to be. Amen. Never, Amen. never, never. Amen. Right. You'll walk in oppression of the kingdom yes. of Satan and oppression of the kingdom of this world. You'll not understand the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. You'll never understand it. And so they had to see the land that God wanted them to walk in in the name of Jesus. Thank Simple you, outline so far. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Simple. Yes. You gotta you gotta you gotta heed the word. You gotta hear it. Yes. And you gotta see it. But it goes a little bit deeper. Everybody say deeper. 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 Because when Moses now gets over here and he tells the first generation about when, when, when leaders had to be appointed uh, to help lead the people because the people begin to multiply. I want to show you a couple of things here. Go on with me. Verse 9 he says, And I spoke to you at, a, at that time saying, I alone am not able to bear, to, bear, to, to bear you. Now the reason he's saying that is, you look at other translation was, was there there were so many so many people and so many problems coming that he could not handle all of that. Amen. 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 And so go down to verse number eleven. May, may the Lord, may the Lord, uh, may, the, may the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous than you are and bless you as He has promised mm. you. Yeah. He wanted them to understand that He was multiplying them. And that he was going to he was going to bless them. That God's heart was was to bless them. You say, preacher, what do those two verses have together? I'm going to show you because it's important. It's important. And, and I want let me just throw this word out at you very quickly here. It, it's accountability. It's accountability. Submitting to accountability. Mm. Yeah, that Submit one on to accountability. Submit. Submit. Come on. Come on. Verse twelve. How can I bear bear you problems and and your burdens? And your complaints, man, they must have been coming strong. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then Moses said, "He said, this is what I did. I told you to choose, choose wise and understanding and knowledgeable men from among your tribes, and I will make them heads over you." <laughs> I'm a preacher that likes them little words. Mm. I'm going to appoint men that are over you. Mm. Had a couple come in my office years ago, sit down and. They wanted to get married. And I, when I got to the word, submit to your husband as unto, as unto the Lord, she slapped my death with a book real hard. I'll never agree to that. And I said, then I won't marry you. <laughs> Jumped up and left and never came back to church. But that's what the word of God says. That's Amen. right. Amen. Accountability is, is so important. Accountability is so important. Let's go on because this, this, this is a part of it. Choose you wise men. There's some problems here that's arising. I want you to choose wise men, men with understanding. But I want you to understand you're gonna you're gonna have somebody over you. Yes. <laughs> mm. uh, <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, God's not asking you if you like it. Yeah. Uh, come on. Yeah, come on. Ephesians chapter four, when he gave the fivefold ministry, what was it for? For the edifying, the building up of the saints. Yes, yes. amen. That, that means you're accountable to the fivefold ministry, but it also means the fivefold ministry is accountable to you. Yes. Mm. It's, it, it, it's, it, it's a trade off there. It, it's, it's not saying, you know, not them that they think they're top dogs because they got a ministry. If they're, if they're not being edified, if you're not being edified, not being built up in things of God, they're not, they're not doing their job. But, but God's always aligned in Scripture that there'll be somebody over you. Mm. Well, yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to grab that one, it seems like. All right. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and you answered me and you said that the thing which you have told us to do is good. Sounded mm. real good to them. We're going to have a little bit of order in the camp. 
So I took the heads of your tribes, wives, and knowledgeable men, and made, made them heads over you, leads, uh, leaders of thousands, leaders of hundreds, leaders of fifties, leaders of tens, and officers for your tribes. Then I commanded your judges at that time, saying, Hear the cases between your brethren, and judge, the, judge righteously between a man and his brother, or the stranger who is with him. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid in, you shall not be afraid in any man's presence, for the judgment is God's. Amen. Woo. Well, you better underline that one. Yes. 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 Come on. What are you saying, preacher? If I'm going to move out as the generation that God is raising up, then I got to understand that I got to operate in accountability. Come well, on. we all, we all understand that our first one we're accountable to, accountable to is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. I must submit to Him every day of my life, every morning of my life, every yes. day, every moment that I walk. I must submit it to Him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. But I also understand in that that God lays out accountability stages for the husband, for the wife, for the family members, for the church, and all that accountability is, is so important. That, that there's problems in the camp today because people refuse to submit to accountability. Woo! Come on. Come on. Yes, Come on. Preach it. Yes. Amen. Come on. Truth. <laughs> I don't want to preach it, but it just was in line with where I was headed. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the truth. What, what are you trying to say, preacher? I, I, God wants you free to, to, to move on. Yes. It's time, come on, you just need to say it out loud. It's time to move on. Yes. It's time, it's time to, to move on. ahead. Yes. It's yes. time to get out of this doom and gloom stage. It's time for me yes. to, to, to get out of my wilderness that I've been in. Yes. How many of you have felt like you've been in the wilderness besides me? Yes. It's time to get out of this wilderness. Yes. Then I got to get in the Word. I got to hear. I got to see. And I got to be accountable to the Word of God. That's what it comes down to. Yes. It's not, I'm not talking about people so much as accountable to the Word of God. Yes. 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 You've got to be accountable to the Word of God in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Let me give you another point. That you don't need a board meeting every time God calls you to move. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you don't need a board meeting at all. All right. <laughs> yes. That's right. Well, preacher, where do you get this? Well, I'm going to show you. Come on. So we departed from Horeb, verse 19, and we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which you saw on the way to the mountains of the Amorites, as the Lord our God had commanded us. Then we came to get Kadesh Barnea. Now, when you study the word Kadesh, it actually means sanctuary, but I want you to understand something. It, it was their sanctuary, but they were out of place in Kadesh Barnea. It was a physical sanctuary, not a spiritual sanctuary. Mm. Mm. And I said to you, yeah, one or two grabbed it, and I said to you, you have, you have come to the mountains of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Mm. Yes. What's that next word? Go. Another little word. What? Go. 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 Everybody shout that. Go. Go. Go up and possess it as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be discouraged. Amen. That should have settled it with that former generation. Yes. That should have settled it right then. But let's read the rest of the story. Mm. But every one of you came near to me and said, let us send men. Before us, they came to Moses. Moses told them, man, don't, don't fear. Get to where God is sending us. Don't have any fear. Get on, go. As the Lord has spoken unto your fathers, get up and go. Do not be fear. Do not get discouraged. But oh, wait a minute. On the side over here, we've had a little board meeting. And uh, we don't like so much that going over there where we don't know where we're going. So you came to me and you said, let us sin before us. And let them search out the land for us and bring back word to us on the way by which we should go up and of the cities into which we shall come. The plan pleased me well. So I took 12 of your men, one from each tribe. And they departed and went. You say, well, Moses agreed with it. That don't mean Moses was right. He agreed with their plan. And they, did, But he didn't, hear, he didn't hear God tell him that. Mm. And they departed and went up into the mountains and came to the valley of Eshcol and, and spied it out. They also took some of the fruit of the land in their hand and brought it down to us, and they brought it back word to us, saying, It is a good land which the Lord our God is giving us. Nevertheless, 
The, the, the worst word besides but is nevertheless. Mm. Nevertheless, you will not go up, but rebel against the command of the Lord your God. Yeah. Why? Because anytime you have a board meeting, it is not biblical, it is not scriptural, and so you're you're going, and you don't know if you're putting somebody on that board. Well, I'm about to get in trouble again. Oh, you don't know on. if you're putting somebody on that board that's a spiritual man or a spiritual woman. If they got insight to the plan of God, what I'm telling you is this. If God has already spoken, get into the land. Get over there into the land. Why yes. are you wasting all of this time to send these spies over there? Because those spies were scared. Ten of them were scared. They came back and gave a bad report. But I say to you tonight, whose report are you going to believe? Amen. Woo! Mm. 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 Come on. <laughs> Come on. Gotta hurry. Gotta hurry. Mm. They wouldn't go up. And isn't there something about the former generation? And 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 you, you may you may not want to admit it tonight, but I'll admit it. I, I was a part of the former generation at one time. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on. Yeah, we are. The rest of you are lying, but they'll take care of it. Never, nevertheless, you would not go up, okay? And, and you complained in your tents and said, because the Lord hates us. Mm. Everybody see that with me? Yes. yes. The Lord loves you. He don't hate you. That's, That's right. right. He already gave you a word to get up where you're supposed to be. That's right. That's right. Well, what do they do? Because, because, listen to me. People that are not obedient to the things of the Lord begin to blame other people. Oh, yeah. come on. Come on. Come, yes, on. come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. yes. It's never my fault. It's always Karen's fault. I can tell you. <laughs> Settle. It's always her fault. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Come on. Remember, you have to go home with Amen. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Mm. Now listen to what, look at verse 28. Where can we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart, saying. They're blaming somebody else because they didn't go. The people are greater and, and taller than we, the city. Well, let me ask you something. Did not the, the millions of people that was there, were they, were they not more than the spies that went over? <laughs> but the millions that were there said, those ten people, those ten men, they discouraged me. Well, that's a... That, that, Yes, come on. I'm going to be truthful with you tonight. I know what God's called me to do. I know the call of God upon my life. Yes. And I'm going to be truthful with you tonight. And, and I, I'm, I'm not boasting about me. I'm boasting about God. There's not a one of you in here tonight that can discourage me. That's right. And what God, God. What, what God wants to do with God. my life. Yes. Not a one of you. Yes. Not a one of you. I, you, you can't. And I'm going to tell you something, Pastor. When you got a call of God upon your life, in and, and, and our day and time, the, the ministry is one of the most difficult arenas of life to go into but and, and, and I read the other day that, that over a 13, 1400 ministers a month are leaving the ministry yes sir Ooh. why? Yes, sir. because they're discouraged that's right mm. yep. they hear the voice of God mm. and I've been blessed because I, I, I saw years ago God was going to use me in, in my latter days to be able to, to to be able to encourage it I've been blessed over the last few years to encourage some young ministers this last week, been able to encourage one minister to stand strong, stand strong in the faith, stand strong, be encouraged. God's called you. Man's not called you. Don't don't listen to their report. Listen to the report of the Lord yes. in, the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. yes. Accountability is important. Listen to me. When God speaks to you, move out at the voice of God. Amen. Yes. You've got to. Listen, can I tell you tonight, God wants you? Yes. God wants you. He wants you tonight. He wants you now. He will. He he'll he'll take you just like you are tonight and come down to where you are tonight. Now he won't stay there with you. He'll, he his intention is to come down to where you are and take you out of where you are to where he wants you to be. Amen. Come on. Amen. But God Amen. wants you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he wants you to quit skirting the same old mountain you've been skirting. Now, yeah. And here's the question. And I, uh, well, I'm just gonna be obedient. Here, here's the question. Are you ready? For, are you ready for that familiar spirit to get off of you? Amen. Are you ready yes. to get your eyes off that familiar yes. spirit yes. tonight? Yes. In yes. the name of yes. Jesus. Yes. Y'all yes. understand what I'm saying yeah, tonight? Absolutely. Yes. We, you cannot. You, you cannot help this team go ahead until you get your eyes off that familiar spirit. Amen. Get that familiar spirit off.
Amen? Amen. Never happened. So let me ask you this. If you're ready to cast that familiar spirit off of you, if you're ready to tell that familiar spirit to go, just stand to your feet right now, right where you are, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Time to get out of the wilderness. Yes. New Testament word for that is redeem the time. It's time to get out of the wilderness in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands to heaven tonight in the name of Jesus and repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, love you tonight, I love you tonight. But this night, but this night I've, understood I've understood the harm, the harm of that familiar spirit, of, familiar spirit. of how the enemy, the enemy has used that familiar spirit, that familiar spirit to, keep me to keep me from going on, from going on into my promised land. Into my promised land. And, right now, and right now, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus by, the of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, I rebuke that familiar spirit. I tell it to get off of me. I tell it to get out of me. Because from this night on, I'm not going to follow the former generation. But I'm going to follow the presence of God. I'm going to hear the word. I'm going to see the word. I'm going to come under authority of the word. And when the word tells me to go, I'm going to go. Now I know after tonight, I'm going. I'm going to where God wants me to be. Where God wants me to be. In the name of Jesus. Under the influence of the Holy One of Israel. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. For, this For this is the will of God. Concerning me. Concerning me. No, more looking back. no more looking back. But I'm looking ahead. I'm looking ahead. Into the victory. Into the, victory. Into the overcoming nature. Into the overcoming that God has placed within me. Now give the Lord a shout already. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let, let's, let's give this man a come on, give you a hug first. Amen. That was good word. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you would, please take to the, the plate to the back. Yes. Mm. Now, the, the one thing that we want to make sure we do is we honor this man. We honor this man for what he's done. We're going to take up an offering. What's the matter? Huh? I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Can anybody else not hear me? Okay, just play. <laughs> We're going to honor this man. We're taking up an offering. The offering, the, this, the five days that we have offering, none of it goes to Grace Point. All of it goes to this man right here. I want you to honor him with your offerings tonight. Honor him with your offerings tonight. As, as Pastor Leslie brings it to the front, we're going to bless that. We're going to bless that seed into his ministry after she collects all from everybody. Was that a good word? Or was that a good word? Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. If you would, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, thank you so much. Yes, God. For the word that we received tonight. Thank yes. you, Father God, that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you showed up and you were large and in charge. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. It is all about you. Father. Yes, all about you. Father, I lay my hands right now on every single penny in this plate and I claim blessings, yes. blessings over Evangelist Bill Pierce and his ministry yes, God. in Jesus' yes. name. Jesus. Father yes, God. God. That each one of these seeds are going into his ministry and it grows. Yes. It grows, Father yes, God. God. It yes. grows, Multiply, Father, Father God. God. Father God, it says don't muzzle the ox. Come on. When he's treading. Yes, God. And we loose that muzzle right now. 
In Jesus' name, Jesus. my God. We claim all of these things in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Amen. 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 Guys, I want to, yes, please. I want to invite everybody back tomorrow. Let me have the phone, please. Yeah. Invite everybody back tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Invite everybody back tomorrow. We will be back here again at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Yes. Um, I'm telling you what, you know now to bring a friend. Come on. You know now to bring a family. You now, you now, now you know everybody on your street needs to come with you. Come on, because this is a move of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. We are ushering in this revival to usher in the third great awakening yes. in America. It is happening right now. Amen. That's what this is all about, guys. We love you, and as my precious wife and I always love to do. We call you blessed, blessed and, and highly, highly favored, favored. in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Yes. Love you guys, and we'll see y'all tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Amen.